Welcome back to the eighth part in this series in this uh, content feed application. In this one, we want to add a placeholder for an image to go into our uh, our little card that we've created for each content item. And I'm also going to add another content item uh, to uh, the data coming back in, in the API response so that we can see what it looks like with a little bit more content. One quick thing to note just before we get started is that I have just gone through and re-indented my code so that it's using two space tabs, not four space tabs. Uh, that's just because that's the JavaScript standard and for some reason my editor wasn't on that for JavaScript by default. Now what I want to do is go to the Chrome Develop Tools and as you can see we've still got a few uh, warnings here left over from the last video. I'm going to quickly make a couple of changes to uh, the code for this front end just to make it look a little bit nicer. So the first one here is you can see we've got a, uh, it's, it's warning us that we haven't got a unique key prop for each of the uh, child elements. So if we scroll down we've got content feed and a content item. But if you look here it's rendering each content item, passing the actual item down, but we're not actually passing any uh, index to that element. And this is just nice because it, it gives us a way for us to refer to each individual uh, content item that we're sort of rendering. Um, so that index uh, has been used uh, when we when we use the map. It's, it's something that's given for us. So we can just pass that down. That'll just be an integer like 0, 1, or 2, uh, depending on how many elements we're rendering. So if we go back to the browser, you can see that that's actually resolved that. So the next one is uh, we're using a card block, but in the latest version of React Strap, it's actually called card body. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that to body, and I'm going to change it to body where if we use it as well. So card body and card body. So once we change that over, you can see if we go back. Uh, that's disappeared, that error is now gone. Another change I want to make is, as you can see this card at the moment is left aligned because we put a, a column width of 6 on it and bootstrap is sort of out of 12, so 6 out of 12 but we haven't got anything sort of to the left of that um, and what I want to do is add a sort of a 3 column uh, to the left of it so it looks like it's centre aligned. So if you have a look where that column is defined you can see we've got a column of width 6 here and what I want to do is, in fact I can just uh, copy and paste that and I can change it to uh, 3 and then of course I have to close that off as well um, but I'm just going to leave it empty for now because that's going to give us the ability to sort of shift over that middle one and if it re-renders you can see it's now centered and even if I actually close the Chrome developer tools you can see that it's still centered and it still looks a little bit nicer than it did before. The next thing I want to do is just so that we have some more content to test with in our front end I want to add another content item so I'm just going to go to the API that I still have open at localhost port 8000 where the Django API is still and I'm just going to use this form to create another content item. So now we've got two, and if we go back to the list view, if we send another get request there, you can see we've got, instead of one, we've got two items in that API response now. So if we go back to the front end, you should be able to see that there's actually now two uh, content feed items that are appearing as a result of that API response. I think they would both look a little bit better if they had an image associated with those though. So for now I'm just going to put in the front end a placeholder image and then we're going to figure that out in the back end probably in the next video or something. So let's go and add above the card body because I want to put an image above the rest of the text. Um, I'm going to put a card image and that's using React Strap again. I'm just going to say top width is equal to uh, 100%. And this is the nice thing about React Strap is it gives you a very intuitive sort of nice way of adding in inline styles. Although you shouldn't necessarily do this uh, a lot, you, you should probably put this majority of this stuff in the CSS file. It can be good for sort of sketching up things quicker and just using that close to English style of styling elements within that sort of JSX syntax that we're using. And then the second attribute I want to put here is a source. And I have actually got a uh, placeholder image copied, so I'm just going to paste the link in, in there to that image so that it's just, uh, hard coded for now. Uh, just so that we can see what it looks like. And don't forget we also have to close off the card image and sort of end it like we do with everything else. And I'm also going to have to import it, so from the top I'm also, next to everything else, I'm going to put card image, or card img. Now that's compiled then, we can see a placeholder image that's showed up above each of these uh, content items that's sort of dynamically added as soon as we get the response from uh, the link with the source. 
So that's that's because this image is coming from a different source, it may take a different amount of time to respond. And what React does that's quite good is it updates that component as soon as it gets that placeholder image. Uh, that means that we don't have to wait for all the responses to show anything to the user. It shows as much as it can to, to the user uh, by rendering what it can of the component and then simply updating it uh, as soon as it can with the information which it just receives. So in the next one, we're going to look at how to provide that image from the API rather than having to hard code placeholder.